Cinderella story whether you have heard of any other fairy tales or not you have undoubtedly read this one once upon a time there lived a noble gentleman who had one dear little daughter unfortunately her own mother was no more so her father married a grand lady who had two daughters of her own but the step mother was jealous of her step daughter as she was much prettier and sweeter than her own children and she gave her all the hard work of the house to do whilst the true proud sisters spent their time at pleasant parties and entertainments the only pleasure the poor child had was to spend her evenings sitting in the chimney corner resting her weary limbs for these region her sister mockingly nicknamed her cinderella cinderella feels very savvy but in her little turn frock and ragged shoes she was a thousand times more lovely than they now it chanced that the king's son gave a grand ball to which he invited all the lords and ladies in the country and members of to the public for days her step sisters could talk of nothing but the clothes they should wear and the grand folk they hoped to meet when at last the great day arrived cinderella was kept running about from early till late decking the sisters and dressing their hair don't you wish you were going to the ball said one of them indeed i do sighed the poor cinderella the sisters burst out laughing a pretty spectacle you would be they said rudely go back to your cinders they are fit company for rex then stepping carefully into their carriage they drove away to the ball cinderella went back to her chimney corners and tried not to feel envious but the tears would gather in the pretty eyes and trickle down the sorrowful little face what are you crying for child cried a silvery voice cinderella raised her eyes and saw her fairy grandmother i do so want began cinderella then her sobs stopped her to go to the ball finished the godmother cinderella nodded will leave of crying be a good girl and you shall go run quickly into the garden and bring the largest pumpkin you can find cinderella could not imagine how a pumpkin could help her to go to the ball but her only thought was to obey her godmother in a few moments she was back again with a splendid pumpkin her godmother scooped out the inside one touch of the wand and the pumpkin was a golden coach lined with white satin now god child quick the mouse trap from the pantry here it is godmother said cinderella breathlessly one by one six fat sleek mice passed through the tra- trap door as each appeared a touch of the wand transformed it into a cream colored horse fit for a queen now cinderella can you find a coachman there is a large gray rat in the rat trap would he do godmother run the fetch him child and then i can judge so cinderella ran to fetch the rat and her godmother said he was just made for a coachman 
एंड आई थिंक यू वुड हैव एग्रीड विद हर हैड यू सेम हिम अ मोमेंट लेटर विद इज पावर्ड विग एंड सिल्क स्टॉकिंग्स ओ गॉड मदर सी क्राइड इट इज ऑल सो लवली देन सडनली सी थॉट ऑफ हर सेबी फ्रॉक देर इज माई व्हाइट मुस्लिम्स she said wistfully if do you think before cinderella could realize that what was happening her godmother's wand tapped her lightly on the shoulder and in place of the sabi frog there was a gleam set in silver and pliers oh who can describe a robe made by the fairies it was white as snow and as dazzling round the hem hung a fringe of diamonds sparkling like a dew drops in the sunshine the lace about the throat and arms could only have been spun by fairy spiders surely it was a dream cinderella put her dainty globed hand to her throat and softly touched the pears that encircled her neck come child said the godmother or you will be late as cinderella moved the fair light shone upon her dainty shoes they are of diamonds she said no answered her godmother smiling they are better than that they are of glasses made by the fairies and now child go and enjoy yourself to your heart's content only remember if you stay at the palace one instant after midnight a few moments later the coach dashed into the royal courtyard the door was flung open and cinderella alighted as she walked slowly up the richly carpeted satire case there was a murmur of admiration and the king's son hastened to meet her never said he to himself have i seen any one so lovely he led her into the ballroom where the king's who was much taken with her sweet face and pretty modest manner whispered to the queen that she must surely be a foreign princess the evening passed away in a dream of delight cinderella dancing with no one but the handsome young prince and being waited one by his own hands at supper time the two sister could not recognize their ragged little sister in the beautiful and graceful lady to whom the prince paid so much attention and felt quite pleased and flattered when she addressed a few words to them presently a clock chimed the three quarters past 11 and remembering her godmother's warning Cinderella at once took leave of the princess and jumping into her coach was driven rapidly home here she found her godmother waiting to hear all about the ball it was lovely said cinderella and oh godmother there is to be another tomorrow night and i should so much like to go to it then you shall replied the kind fairy and kissing her god child tenderly she vanished when the sisters returned from the ball they found a sleepy little maiden sitting in the chimney corner waiting for them how late you are cried cinderella yawning are you not very tired not in the least they answered and then they told her what a delightful ball it had been and how the loveliest princess in the world had been there and had spoken to them and admired their pretty dresses 
who watch siege ask cinderella slowly that we cannot say answered the sisters she would not tell her name though the princess begged her to do so on bended knee dear sister said cinderella i too should like to see the beautiful princess will you not lend me your old yellow gown that i may go to the ball tomorrow with you but cried her sister angrily lend one of my dresses to a little cinder maid don't even think about it the next night the sisters were more particular than ever about their attire but at last they were dressed and as soon as their carriage had driven away the godmother appeared once more she touched her god child with her wand and in a moment she was arrayed in a beautiful dress that seemed as though it had been woven of moonbeams and sunshine so radiantly did it gleam and shimmer she put her arms around her godmother's neck and kissed and thanked her good bye and enjoy yourself but whatever you do remember to leave the ball before the clock strikes 12 the godmother said and cinderella promised but the hours flew by so happily and so swiftly that cinderella forgot her promise until she happened to look at a clock and saw that it was the stroke of 12 with a cry of alarm she fled from the room dropping in her haste one of the little glass slippers but with the sound of the clock stroke in her ears she dared not wait to pick it up the prince hurried after her in alarm but when he reached the entrance hall the beautiful princess had vanished and there was no one to be seen the fire was out when cinderella reached her home and there was no godmother waiting to receive her but she sat down in the chimney corner to wait her sister return when they came in they could speak of nothing but the wonderful things that had happened at the ball the beautiful princess had been there again they said but had disappeared just as the clock struck 12 and though the prince had searched every here for her he had been unable to find her he was quite beside himself with grief said the elder sister for there is no doubt he hoped to make her his bride cinderella listened in silence to all they had to say and slipping her hand into her pocket felt that the one remaining glass slipper was safe for it was the only thing of all her grand apparel that remained to her one of the following morning there was a great noise of trumpets and drums and a procession passed through the town at the head of which rode the king's son behind him came a herald bearing a velvet cushion upon which rested a little glass slipper the herald blew a blast upon trumpet and then read a proclamation saying that the king's son would wed any lady in the land who could fit the slipper upon her foot if she could produce another to match it Of course the sister tried to squeeze their feet into the slipper but it was no of use they were much too large then cinderella slowly begged that she might try the sister laughed with the scorn when the prince knelt to fit the slipper on the cinder mat's foot but to their surprise it slipped on with the greatest ease 
and the next moment cinderella produced the other shoe from her pocket once more she stood in the slippers and once more the sister law before them the lovely princess who was to be the princess bride for at the touch of the magic shoes little gray frock disappeared forever and in the place of it she wore the beautiful robe and fair godmother had given to her cinderella then married the prince and in time they came to be king and queen and lived happily ever after thank you for watching my video please subscribe my channel